One of the most common questions that you guys ask me is how can I get into the game development industry? What do I need to know? Where should I learn it? What skills do I need? And so on and so forth. So I found a really cool video, which is recruiters top five tips to get into the game development industry. And this is a recruiter from Massive Entertainment, which is a Ubisoft studio. So let's take a look at his advice and then we will give our comments and you can also share opinions down below. So, you know, let's get started. So tip number one would be to love what you do and pick a path to specialize in. The reason why I say this is because if you're excited to go to work, then you're going to do a good job. So picking a path is picking what part of, of game development you want to be a part of. So do you want to be... Well, the first thing that he mentioned, as you can see, is that you should pick a path that you're passionate about, which is true. And people often come to me and they see that I'm doing well with game development and all of that stuff. And they're like, I want to learn. I'm like, do you like it? He is, well, I don't know, but I want to learn. It doesn't go like that. I'm not saying that if you don't like something, you cannot learn it. You can, but the problem is just this that Sebastian, yeah, Sebastian mentioned, which is if you don't love it, then you will not do a great job at it. Maybe that will last for some time because you need the money to sustain yourself and stuff like that, but you will eventually break down because you're doing something that you don't love every single day and that, you know, comes back at you. So make sure that you truly love game development when you get into it. Another thing that he says over here is that you need to specialize what you want in game development. And he starts here talking about art and he mentions a lot of other things such as game testers, art, programming, game design, and so on and so forth. You are here, I'm assuming that you are here on my channel because I want to learn how to program. This is the majority of my tutorials and what we do over here. So that's the thing that you should be focused on. If you want to program games, focus on that. Try to learn only that. You don't need to get involved in art and all that stuff. Of course, if you are an indie game developer, the story is different because you also need to either learn how to create your own art or buy art online and then combine it into your game. But the essential point over here is if you get a job in any company, in the game development field, you will be doing one thing. It's not like you will be doing 30 different things, except if you are in a smaller indie studio where you will be expected to, you know, have different skills and implement them. But usually you will be focused on one single thing. So make sure that you master that one thing. So tip number two would be to be curious and always eager to learn. This is about educating yourself, being knowledgeable about your, your topic and it doesn't necessarily mean going to university. You can self-teach online, but one of the things we really look for is practical experience. So have you done an internship or are you involved in communities? Do you have a, an active portfolio? Do you have passion projects? That and thank you, Sebastian, for bringing this point up. A lot of people are asking me, do I need to finish college to, you know, get into the industry or to learn game development? The answer is from a recruiter directly from a person who, you know, recruits people to get into the industry, who probably hires them as well. There you go. You don't have to go to college or whatever to be part of a game development, you know, industry or to learn game development in general, because you can learn online. There are a lot of resources online, including, you know, moi, awesome com and all of that stuff, my YouTube channel. You can learn from those sources. You don't have to, you know, pay a bunch of money, depending on where you live. This is mostly for people in the US. You pay a bunch of money to go to college. You don't have to do that. And uh, yeah, for people in other countries where college is not so expensive, you also don't have to do that because you can learn online. What's important is what Sebastian mentioned, which is practical skills. Do you have any practical skills? He mentioned here internships which is good if you did them. If you didn't do, are you involved in communities? Like on Facebook group, Discord, whatever, but people who are, you know, in the game development, you know, feel, are you contributing to something? Are you doing some projects with somebody? Do you have an active portfolio, which he said, like, are you working on something and so on and so forth? So these are the things that I also mentioned and that I advise you that you have, you know, by yourself, if you want to apply to get into the game dev industry or work for a company. Every job ad that we post, we list some of the tools that you, you would need in those, those roles. So I would suggest look at those tools 
and pick them up as a hobby maybe, develop your skills with those tool sets. Obviously if it's programming or game design you want to look at Unity and Unreal and then maybe more design skills, Photoshop, uh, ZBrush, all of these things will help you to develop your craft. This is one of the things that I don't agree here because usually when an ad or a job posting is posted by a company, they list these tools, as he mentioned, but they usually try to, you know, they overdo it. Like they're looking for a game developer who knows C++, C Sharp, Swift, iOS, Android, Unreal, Unity, has created five AAA games, has worked in, you know, in the industry for 20 years, but still that's a junior developer position. So don't look at that that much, you know. If you are confident, like look at the main role, like they're looking for a Unity developer, okay? Just ignore all of the other stuff that they are, you know, that they want. If you are confident in your Unity skills, if you're confident that you will be able to do the job, up that is described and expected from you, apply anyway. You don't lose anything. Just apply, get to that interview and then explain, okay, I don't know ZBrush, I don't know Photoshop, but I'm very skilled in Unity and I can do this and that and I, you know, am eager to learn and so on and so forth, which is one of the skills that Sebastian mentions here and also one of the skills that I say all the time. You simply need to have a skill to learn. That's a skill. Nowadays, that's a skill because a lot of people are asking me like, you know, this tutorial is outdated and so on and so forth. Like when I look at, look up resources online, I find tutorials or projects that are from 2015, 2016, and I still use them because I, I know how to learn from those tutorials, from those projects. So that is a skill that you need to develop. For these reasons, as I said, you get to the interview, you say, okay, I don't know, like you want five things, I know two of them, but I'm eager to learn and I can learn the other three, you know, but I'm very skillful these and I can do and so on and so forth. So this is my advice, don't stress if you see a lot of things that are asked in a job posting because that's their ideal candidate that they're looking that they will never find. So they will, you know, get the person who is closest to that and knows how to do the things that, you know, that job is you know require requiring to you to do so tip number three would be to prove your skills and understanding so this is about demonstrating what you can do and showing not just the recruiter but the, the hiring team getting your foot in the door essentially so you want to have a, a strong CV and show all your skill sets and not just say oh I'm a really good programmer but write down prove demonstrate experiences examples situations that you've been through and be very specific with with what you've done so far portfolios are almost always essential for art and design roles so make sure that that's up to date you've got a full stock of material maybe your public Published work, but if not anything that's published, personal projects is always helpful. And now, when it comes to the portfolio, I don't fully agree here. You don't have to go into detail that much because nobody's going to read that anyways. If you write a portfolio, you know, like this big, chances are that the recruiter, the hiring team, whoever it is, they will not look at that because it's too long and stuff like that mention your skills and also include the projects that you did this is what i am saying all the time and somebody will say now okay but i never work in a company i you know never been involved in a project okay do your own projects that's your portfolio do your own projects like create a website where you can showcase your projects link them from github and so on and so forth don't just say oh i created this game Put a link to that game if you published it on Google Play, on iOS, or on Steam, or wherever, itch.io, or whatnot. Just put a link to it and say, okay, I created this. They can click on that because, you know, you will usually send your CV over, you know, online, the internet, and stuff like that. So they will be able to click on that and they will be able to open it, see it in action and that will impress them to get you to the interview where you can then explain your code, how you did things, probably include the GitHub repo of your code so they can, you know, inspect it, see how you code, see how you understand object-oriented programming, all that stuff, depending on the engine or the job that you're applying, what is the requirement and all of that stuff. Just don't overdo your portfolio because people, you know, they say recruiters and stuff like, you know, people like that, as you can hear, put the situations where you've been through, don't go into too much detail because at the end of the day, if it's too long, nobody's going to read that. They want a short CV. They want to see, you know, point A, point B, point C, and so on and so forth. Be able to click, see, touch, and stuff like that. So then they will be able to see your skills. And, you know, that will eventually get you to the position. Tip 
number four would be to put yourself out there and network. This could be going to big events, E3, Gamescom, or maybe small events in your hometown. Maybe there is a meetup, maybe there is um, a developer conference. I don't know what it is, but go to events, meet people, introduce yourself, get familiar with the terminology, the people, the, the industry. Yeah, grow your network. This is not the first time that I've heard this tip for people who want to get in the game development industry. I also heard it from professionals, but that is not applicable for everyone. For example, for me, I don't live in USA or somewhere where there are a lot of events and stuff like that. So I cannot go to events and I cannot meet up with people, but for people who live in those cities, in those countries where you have a lot of events, it's not that far away from you, definitely go bring your A game. When I say A game, I mean, you know, be ready to connect with people, tell them about your projects, probably have something to showcase them like, you know, on your phone. When I say on your phone, I'm not going to take a screenshot of your project and stuff like that, but a GitHub repo, a short video or stuff like that, that they can see, you know, and feel right away. So that way you will connect with people and who knows, maybe some guy person, whatever that you connected with on those, you know, events will have a job for you, will know somebody who is looking for a person like you with your skills and all of that stuff. So that is definitely one of the good tips, but not, again, not applicable for everyone, but who can go and has something close nearby his city, definitely go or find some events online and then, you know, just join there. Tip number five is to be persistent and don't give up. So maybe you're not going to get the first job that you apply to. But if you, you keep trying and you adapt your uh, applications, your portfolio, if you personalize your approach to the company, you're more likely to receive feedback from them. And then moving forward, if you do get rejected, ask for feedback. Be very specific. So ask them what you could have done differently. Maybe it was a, you got to a design test and they didn't like something. Ask exactly what it was that you could have done differently. Speak to the recruiters. Maybe ask them the profile that got hired. What, was, what did they have that was different from me? And kind of pick the pieces together and, and, and develop your application for the next time. This is definitely a good tip. And he has totally right. He is totally right when he said you are probably not going to get your first job. He said maybe, but 100% you're not going to get your first job, or except if you're very lucky. And then I don't mean this to discourage you, but you know, a lot of people are applying. And if you are a complete beginner who didn't have any or doesn't have professional experience, then they will go with somebody who worked, you know, had an internship and stuff like that. But don't give up, you know, sometimes you will have to apply 10 times, 15 times, 20 times before you get to the job where you want to be. Again, don't give up. And even if you are currently at the job that you maybe don't like, or you are at the job that you like, but you would love to have something better, and stuff like that. Just apply anyways to other jobs, but make sure that, you know, your company doesn't know about that because, you know, you will get into issues. But yeah, definitely don't give up. Don't think that if you get rejected that you're not good and stuff like that because usually companies like to, you know, be an ass, so to say. And they are, you know they play a sophisticated role. Like, okay, we are a big company. We're looking for a very professional dude. Like, <laughs> this is our BS. But again, don't worry. Don't stress. Don't think that you are bad or that that's not for you and stuff like that. I mean, that's the path. The path to success goes like this. It doesn't go, you know, you're not at the top right away. You go like this. Maybe you will fall a little bit, then go again and stuff like that. So yeah, that happened to everybody. That happened to me. That happened to a lot of other people that I know. So it's, you know, normal. Don't worry. Don't stress. Don't give up. Move forward and you will eventually get to the position that you are looking for. So yeah, this was the recruiters top five tips for you to get into the game development industry, which is basically what I talk a lot about in my videos. And uh, yeah, don't overdo it. Anything that you do in one of these five tips, don't overdo it. I would add one more tip, which is something that he did not mention. That is included, that's like a sub tip from the learn more and grow. You definitely need to be, you need to learn how to learn all the time. You need to leverage online resources like Stack or Overflow, Google, use all that to your advantage because nowadays, 
programmers don't code. It, it's simple. It's like that. It's funny. People think, oh, you, blah, 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 blah. But that's the truth. They, they go on Stack Overflow. They go on Google. They go on GitHub. They get the project similar to what they're doing. They inspect the code, reuse the code. So that's a very valuable skill because you can also expand your knowledge by exploring other people's projects and all of that stuff. So that's a really important thing that, you know, Sebastian or what was his name? I don't know. The recruiter. I'm going to call him the recruiter. Didn't mention here. Anyways, that is from me. I have a really cool thing that I'm working, a really cool project that I'm working on for the past three or four months. This is something that I wanted to do years before, but I didn't get a chance because, you know, the setup that I have with my website and all of that stuff is not possible. But yeah, expect really big news because this is something that nobody has done so far in the game development world, which is an awesome, an awesome contribution and you will find it very useful and all that stuff. So subscribe to the channel to learn more about that. Also go on my website, get the assets on osblues.com and you will also be subscribed to my mailing list because I will be announcing that to my mailing list as well. Anyways, I hear here, I accept, I accept, <laughs> I assume from osblues.com and I will see you guys in the next video.